Hero sections are one of those things that websites tend to have when trying to prompt the user to either sign up to their product or service or make a purchase. They tend to be very simple in design in order to get their message across quickly. Typically located at the very top of a web page, you can kind of see them as the digital equivalent of a storefront window. They often feature concise and persuasive text and a clear call to action button. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly make a hero section using Tailwind CSS and Frame Emotion. The hero section will have a grid-like background which lights up individual grid components as the mouse hovers over it. The effect itself will be achieved using frame of motion as well as the animations for the text and button appearing. For the button, when clicking on it, it will have a nice bouncing effect. If you plan to follow along step by step, you can go ahead and clone the repo that has been linked via the setup branch. Alternatively, you can follow the Vite Tailwind setup which has also been linked below. Inside of the package JSON file, you will see that Frame Emotion has been installed alongside Tailwind and its dependencies within the dev dependencies. Then within the index.html file, I've also taken the liberty to include the Poppins font from Google Fonts, which you can see via the links within the head tag. This has also been included inside of the Tailwind config file. Then inside of the index.css files, aside from the Tailwind decorators, the body of the page has a background of neutral 950 applied from Tailwind. With the intro to the setup out of the way, inside of the app.tsx file, we're returning a main tag. For that, we can give it the classes of width full to cover the full width of the screen and a position of relative, as we'll have a background grid underneath the text content. We can then add a section which will hold the grid and give it the classes width full, grid, grid columns 20, a height of the entire screen, and overflow Y clip. The overflow Y clip is there to ensure that our grid can still be partially visible after the cutoff point of the screen, as all screen sizes may be different. Now, you may be wondering where this grid column 20 is coming from, as it is not readily available within Tailwind. Well, Tailwind by default goes up to the value of 12, allowing us to create 12 columns at max. In our case, we want more. Fortunately, Tailwind allows us to extend this. Inside of the Tailwind config, underneath the font family, we can add grid template columns and assign that to an object that has the value 20 set to repeat parentheses 20, min max 0, and 1 fr. If you're not so familiar with CSS, here we're basically saying that we want to create 20 grid columns where each track can shrink to 0 and grow to distribute the available space equally among them. Then, back inside of the app.tsx file, we can add a div element underneath the section and provide the following class names pointer events none, absolute, inset 0, flex, flex column, a gap of 5, item center, justify center, a z index of 10, a margin bottom of 10, and font poppins. Then within that div, we can add a h1 tag with a greeting such as hello and give it the class names text 9xl for size, a text color of neutral 100, font blacks that is a strong bold, uppercase, and tracking tight to keep the letters close to one another. Then a paragraph tag with some text such as join my grown community of creative developers, which we can then give the class names text white, a width of a half, extra large hex, text center, and tracking wide, which will space out the letters a bit more. Then finally, our call to action button with some text to prompt the user, like subscribe. We can give this the class names text neutral 100, rounded full, a text size of 3XL, a background of indigo 700, a padding on the X of 10, and Y3, a border of indigo 900, and pointer events auto. Now, we need the pointer events auto here because without it, we will not be able to press the button. We're essentially telling the browser to revert back to the default behavior in regards to the button. Now, if we jump into the terminal and run npm run dev, then head to the browser following the link, we should see our content displayed in the middle of the screen. Let's now go ahead and animate this content in before we shift our focus to the grid effect. At the top of the app.tsx file, we can import motion from frame of motion. We will need this in order to animate in our HTML tags. The first thing to do is prefix the h1 tags with motion and then provide initial to have the object opacity 0 and y100. This means that we want our hello text to start off with no opacity and a bit further down than where it is. Then we can add the animate prop, which tells Framer where we want the text to end up by the end of the animation, which will be an opacity of 1 and Y0. If we preview this in the browser, every time we reload the screen, we can see how the hello text fades in upwards. 
For the paragraph tag, we can do something similar. We can prefix it with motion and then add the initial prop to be opacity 0 and Y100. Animate to be opacity 1 and Y0 and then also a transition where we can set delay to be 0.25 seconds. This just means that the animation will start 0.25 seconds after the page has been loaded, which is a bit after our hello message. As for the button, we can again add the motion tag, but this time for initial, we can set scale to be 0 and animate to be 1. This will have an effect that will allow the button to grow into the viewport. For the interactions, we can add a while hover with scale set to 1.1, so that when the cursor is above it, it grows a little in size. Then a while tap, which holds the object containing scale 0.9, so that when we click on it, it scales down a little. Finally, to add some springiness to the interaction, we can have it so that the transition includes type set to spring, stiffness set to 400, and damping set to 17. The stiffness is that of the spring. The higher the value, the more stiffer and sudden the movement. Whereas the damping sets the damping ratio of the spring. It controls how quickly the spring's oscillations decay over time. A value such as 17 will result in less bouncing and a quicker return to the resting point. If we check this all out in the browser, we can see how the hero section comes to life as different components are animated in. Then when we click on the subscribe button, we can see how it scales in size as we hover over it and bounces when we click on it. We can now shift our attention to the start of the show, the grid effect. For that, inside of the project, create a new directory within source called components. Then within that, a file called tile.tsx. Here we can return a simple component called tile that returns a self-closed div. For that, we can give it the class names of aspect square to ensure that each tile remains square shaped, a background of neutral 950, a border neutral of 900, then on hover to have a background of indigo 600, transition colors, and duration 100. Now the reason I've added the hover, transition, and duration is to show the difference between this effect and the one that we are aiming for. We can then head back to the app component and import the tile. Then within the section, we can add the following. We can make use of the array from method to create 20 by 12 tiles. The 20 is there to match the number of columns in our grid, whereas the 12 is some arbitrary number so that we have enough rows to make it look good. In total, this will render 240 tiles within the grid. If we preview this in the browser, we can see the tiles in the grid light up, even behind the text, thanks to the pointer events none that we use. However, the color change on each tile is happening too fast, whereas we want more of a trailing effect. To fix this, we can do the following. Back in the tile component, we can remove the last three classes, duration 100, transition colors, and the hover background change. We can then import motion from frame of motion and prefix a div with it. For the interactions, we can add a while hover prop object and set the Z index to be one and the background color to be hex value 7C3AED which will give us the same indigo we had before in the hover. Back in the browser, we have the trailing effect taking place, which kind of reminds me of the old school snakes game. However, this is still happening too fast, and I would rather have the colors to fade out more gently. So for that, we can add in a transition prop to our div and set the duration to be five and ease to be ease out, which creates a smooth, decelerated animation effect. And there we have it. In the browser, we can see the hero section in its final form, where we have a trailing hover effect follow the cursor, which slowly fades out unless the cursor hovers over it again, as well as a text and button animations. In just a few short steps, we have managed to create a hero section that includes some animations and micro interactions. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. You can also find me on Twitter slash X or via the Discord server linked below. But as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next video.